<laughs> yeah, king of the road, swing it. Um, so, when you sit down to play jazz type things on there, uh, I notice that all the single line things, you don't use pedals as much. Um, they're, they're just played like note for note as you, as you go around the steel. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the way I learned uh, years ago, and I never have been able to get, out, you know, get away from it. They do it now. There's a lot of other steel players use pedals, but it's just a thing I grew up with and never got away from. Mm -hmm. But what, do you see the shapes of the uh, the chord forms or the shapes of the scales so you know where you can go wander around to, to get your licks? Yeah, I have pockets. And uh, of course, these, this tuning is not, it's quite a bit different than E9, in that the E9 has a lot of whole tone. <laughs> quite a bit different than up here. You don't have the uh, freedom of the that kind of thing unless you drop down here. But up here it about these things uh, as you're as you're going to sit down and work out an arrangement let's say you're going to do uh, well, um, watch what happens for example and you know you say okay I've worked out the melody I've got my chord solo now I'm going to take a solo on it uh, is this mostly a mental game that you play as far as where your notes are going to come from you know you hear the melody in your head before you play it well it's uh, you know you play long enough you know that you do enough things that you're going to fall into uh, into place on some of the uh, those are all stock things that I'm aware of, but I, I do like to get lost mm -hmm. and, uh, and work see, my way see, out. You can find your way back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's that's the fun part of that. Yeah. Because they're, you know, like I say, they're all. They end up being cliches after a while. You do lean on them. Mm -hmm. Anything on how the tuning itself evolved, where the C6 came from, where the F on the bottom came from? The first I ever heard, the first C6 I ever heard was uh, Jerry Bird. I, he may be responsible for that tuning. But as we went from six to seven to eight strings, I started on eight when uh, I had a pedal guitar. I worked my way up with the six string laptops mm -hmm. first and used Jerry's tuning. Uh, he had to sometimes he would tune that up. Yeah. And uh, from there that evolved into uh, when we went to ten strings, I put it on the and dropped it. So now we got an A7 sharp nine. Yeah. So jazz chords just seem to flow out of that neck a lot easier than out of the E9. It is, uh, for the most part, because of the range you have on it. You're, you're able to uh, use the bottom strings as roots, or you, it's difficult on here. You, you never get below a fifth. Right, yeah, a much higher pitched neck. Yeah. But yes, it's...
이번에 진짜 I noticed on one of the other things you, you did a slant while you were playing anyway, so you're still incorporating some of your old lap steel oh, days yeah. into the pedal world. Yeah, there's one. And it's... Things like that. Yeah. <laughs> I always wanted to see how that laid on steel because it's a bitch on guitar. <laughs> I'll try that again. I'm, I'll cut it out. <laughs> That's nuts. <laughs> and it fits anywhere. I mean, it doesn't matter what tune you're in, it'll work because it's all oh, chromatic yeah. anyway. That's all there is to yeah. it. All right. <laughs> That's a crazy lick. Beautiful, one of those classic tunes. Um, you want to talk about some of the harmonic things you're doing? I noticed you use the your pinky. Uh, some people tend to use the palm. Uh, yeah, that's when I was learning how to do that. I uh, I couldn't do it well. I had too much palm, I guess. Okay. But uh, it was easier for me to catch the fine, you know, the uh, bony part or whatever it is. Yeah, on the, the knuckle. Yeah. Of the knuckle. And, uh, also a little cleaner. It's a little brighter, yeah. A little brighter. Yeah. And then you'll go to the, the fifth or the second octave. You won't just go with your yeah. 12th frets. And you're looking probably where your thumb pick is rather than because you can't see where your pinky is, right? So you're relating it to where your thumb is. Yeah. Um, Anything else about that song that uh, you'd like to talk about? No, it's just something I pieced together, but I always had a affection for uh, the Orient, 
you know, to Japan, always wanted to visit there. And uh, while I was in one of my sentimental moods, mm -hmm. I put this thing together and called it Blue Jade. Yeah. That's definitely a beautiful piece. Thank you. Um, I noticed on some of it you have a, an unusual setup with your knee levers where both knees moving inward give you the five chord. Right. Which is, uh, I don't see that too often on most people's setups. Is that a special thing you worked out? Both knee levers, yeah. Were you talking about left and right? Uh, or yeah, when you, do, when you do that. Yeah. Yeah, that's something I worked out. There you go. <laughs> I was right. Coming back to me. Okay. Yeah, because that's a wonderful change. I remember the first time I heard it, I think it was Danny Boy, when you went da 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 all on one string and went, oh, wait a minute, how do you do that? Yeah. That I got just that wasn't from there. Brady Martin. Uh, I heard a record that he played with Red Foley called Just a Closer Walk with Thee. Mm -hmm. And it was. Did it on guitar. Oh, okay. And I thought, wow. Yeah. I've got to have it. So I split the pedals. Up to then, the pedals. These two strings were on one pedal. Oh, really? So I had to split the pedals so I could get. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yes. A little history there. <laughs>